Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Washington, located in Beaufort County, North Carolina, on March 30 through April 20th, 1863. In early March, Confederate Command directed Confederate General Daniel H. Hill, along with his whole division of 9,000 men, to go northward to take the Washington garrison of Union soldiers. This garrison comprised of 1,200 men, including the 1st North Carolina Union Volunteers. General Hill spent the next several days positioning himself on both sides of the Tar River. Cutting off the garrison, Hill placed two Confederate brigades on the south side of the river. The purpose of these brigades was to prevent any rescue forces being sent out by the Union. Confederate command was clear, though, do not engage if it risks heavy losses. Confederate General Richard B. Garnett's brigade began the long process of engaging a siege surrounding the Washington garrison, trapping the Union troops and allowing the Confederates to deplete the surrounding area of supplies for their own troops. The Confederates also began to build up earthworks to surround the town and create obstructions in the river to try to slow down and stop Union gunboats. The overall effect was trapping the Union forces inside while the large siege artillery was moved up by the Confederates. During this time, there were several small skirmishes between Confederate artillery batteries and Union gunboats in the water. There was no clear winner in any of these skirmishes. However, no matter what the Confederates did, they couldn't stop Union troops from being resupplied. The resupply happened when Union troops ran the blockade, led by U.S. Major General John G. Foster from the 18th Corps, who brought reinforcements on his fleet of steamers from New Bern. As the reinforcements arrived, General Hill was faced with a choice. Should he retreat with his men or risk engaging in a major battle with heavy losses? He noted they had completely drained the surrounding area of supplies, also the fact that the Union troops were being resupplied without heavy risk, and finally, Confederate General Longstreet had sent communications asking for reinforcements to assault Suffolk. General Hill decided to forego the siege and retreated back to Goldsboro and prepared to meet General Longstreet and aid him. Total combined estimated losses between the Union and Confederacy was less than 100 soldiers killed, wounded, captured, or missed. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.